the next session, which is an overview from the four countries telling you how far we've got with strengthening the commitment. So Ben, I think you're up first. Uh, ben Thomas is the Professional Advisor for Mental Health and Learning Disability Nursing at the Department of Health, an all-round good guy, <laughs> which he is. He's going to be followed, I'm not going to introduce him in turn, he's going to be followed by Margaret Serrells, who is, uh, leads uh, on learning disability nursing for me at Scottish Government, by Frances, who I can't see yet. Well, she's going to, in that case, we're going to be followed by Jennifer French, um, who is the nursing officer for mental health and learning disability in Wales. And hopefully by that time, Fra uh, Frances Cannon from Northern Ireland will be with us. OK, I'm going to hand over to you guys. Oh, right. Well, um... Hello, everyone. How lovely to be here. Ros, thank you very much. Um, I know we wouldn't have got as far as we've got without your sort of dedication and commitment as well. And I know you've been driving this agenda forward. So a personal thanks and a thanks from everyone for all the work that you do as well. I don't know what, what, it, what it is, but more and more when I speak at conferences, I'm only allowed 15 minutes. Um, now, I'm not, I'm not sure. It's, I know it's, I'm not getting paranoid about it, but anyway, I'm going to whiz through where we are in England as far as strengthening the commitment is concerned. And I just want to start off with saying um, it's been an incredible year. It's been an incredible year for me personally and an incredible year for strengthening the commitment and I think the progress that we've made. So I just want to show you these photographs. A lot of you have been kind enough um, to sponsor uh, a walk that we did for the Edith Cavill Trust. And Edith Cavill Trust, for those of you who don't know, is a trust that's set up specifically for nurses who've, um, who, for whatever reason, have fallen on hard times. And um, I have to say, through your generosity and just giving, we've raised now nearly £2,500 towards that. And all I had to do was walk up Snowdon, which was hard, really, at my age. But there we go. Right, OK. Um, what am I pressing this towards? There we go. That would help, wouldn't it? Okay, quick quiz. Who are these two guys? Come on, shout out. You don't know? Okay. These two guys are going to be very important in the future. You need to get to know them and you need to influence them. I've already started. On your right is Sir Mike Richards, who is the new appointed National Director for the Inspector of Hospitals. And I've already met with him and said one of the things he must do on all his visits to hospital, and he intends to visit them all and inspect them, um, all, the, all, the, all the ones in England, by the end of the year, is ask questions and look out for how that hospital, how that general hospital treats people with learning disabilities, because it will say a lot about how they function, how effective they are, how safe they are, all those questions that he wants answered. This guy on the left is our new uh, National Clinical Director for Learning Disabilities, and his name is Dominic Slowey. Yeah. I don't know Dominic. Does anybody know Dominic in the room? You know him, Mark. So what sort of guy is he? So Helen, I think we'll have him at Positive Choices. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's get into bed with him, as they say. Okay. So I said it's been a busy year. This is some of the stuff that's come out. I don't want to, don't want to dwell on it. But what I, what I want to get across is for every report that comes out, and we seem to be inundated with inquiries, um, the Prime Minister seems to want somebody to inspect something or look at something every week these days. Um, so we've had the confidential inquiry, we've had the mid-staffs inquiry, and of course we had Winterbourne View. And all of these have got major implications for you as learning disability nurses. So, you know, I don't want to, you know that you probably have read them as, as much as I have. But just to say that there is tremendous amount of work going on 
out there that has to be linked to strengthening the commitment. We can't see strengthening the commitment over here and all this other policy stuff going on over there. We have to integrate them. Okay, and of course we've had um, the six C's, compassion in practice, and I know a lot of you in the room have contributed to the vision and strategy for what the six C's means for learning disability nursing and how learning disability nurses can contribute to the six C's. Um, it's on, it's on uh, this website, so you can download it if you've not seen the, the latest edition. It's a live document. Um, it's, you know, we're adding to it all the time. So if you feel you've got any ideas or you want to contribute to that, please do. Um, what we're going to do is um, the Department of Health particularly is uh, in charge or looking after Action Area 1, which is all about uh, reducing um, inequalities and also promoting independence. And as you know, and you'll hear about later on, we've got the Health Equalities Framework, which is going to assist us in our task of reducing health inequalities. We want to make the document more user-friendly um, so that people you know, can use it and, uh, and make good use of it. Um, we're going to produce an easy-read version of it. And like all the other stuff I've said, we need to align it with other policy initiatives that are going on. And most important for me is that if you can keep sending me examples of good practice aligned to the six C's or aligned to the action areas, that would be really good. Um, and then, of course, as time goes on, we will update the six action areas. So it's very much alive and it's very much our vision and strategy for nursing in England so be part of that you know and be part of creating our future um what what the next steps are are we we need to do a, a full report uh, for the for the francis review and also the Berwick review which, or report, which looked at the safety um, in the NHS. And I have to say, it was quite a favourable report, even though there are areas where we could improve. Don Berwick, who's uh, you know, an expert from the States, who Prime Minister brought over, was quite uh, pleased, I think, generally, in what he saw in terms of the progress that we've made with regards to patient safety um, in the NHS. But uh, that needs a response in terms of what we're going to do in future. And one of the problems that we do have, you know, we've got a national reporting system. It's very difficult to pick up where patient safety incidents happen and they involve people with learning disabilities because obviously we don't necessarily say that that person has got a learning disability. And I suppose the question that we need to ask is, should we be introducing some sort of flagging system or, you know, for in terms of safety, or is that going to be stigmatising? So have a think about that, because I'd be really interested in your views. Um, we had the Cavendish Review um, report, and we need to respond to that. That looked at the role of um, healthcare assistants in the NHS. And, um, I mean, I don't think there were any surprises in it, really, apart from that we've got 1.3 million healthcare assistants working in the NHS, which is a staggering amount. If you think that the whole registered nursing workforce is only 600,000 and something. So, we've, you know, we've got nearly um, twice as many healthcare assistants as we've got nurses. And the, and the recommendations in there is obviously um, that people need to be trained in order to do the job because they did find healthcare assistants doing the job of, of registered nurses. So there's going to be some fundamental training and people will um, receive a certificate. And also there's a big hoo-ha going on at the moment because the Cavendish report um, basically said, look, healthcare assistants primarily uh, assist nurses. What they do are nursing sort of, you know... Um, designated nursing roles, so therefore they should be called nursing assistants. So those, uh, those still need responses, and of course they need linking, and of course we've got a recommendation in Strength and the Commitment about uh, bringing on the um, unregistered workforce, so I think that will fit in nicely with that. Um, I've got to produce as part of 
um, the Winterbourne View Inquiry, there was a recommendation in it about writing a one-year-on report by the end of this year. So I'm busy writing that. And, it's, and I have to say, it's great the amount of um, you know, developments that have occurred since we published Strengthen the Commitment. And you're going to hear about a lot of those today, you know, including um, stuff about leadership, including stuff about research, including stuff about um, outcome measures. So all really good stuff moving forward. And I really hope that that's how it feels to you, because it's certainly, that's how it seems to me. So I hope that's for real, you know, out there in practice. Um, and as part of Winterbourne as well, the other major recommendation that I'm involved in is we have to produce guidance by the end of the year around positive behaviour support and around physical restraint. And talk about a storm in a teacup. <laughs> um, this is a very tricky bit of work that we're doing, and so I'm really pleased to say that Dave Atkinson is leading on it. <laughs> he's, he's, and we've got um, Ian Stevenson on our um, steering committee representing uh, students. But it is a tricky bit because, as you know, mind, the MIND report has called for a ban on prone restraint, uh, which the minister has taken on board. Um, and it's very difficult to persuade him that um, that is not the way to go. That is a red herring. And what we really need to do is improve uh, particularly inpatient facilities in terms of staffing, expertise, and all those things that we know about. Um, and I think you know, improving all of those things will lead to reduction of the use of restraint. But nevertheless, we've got to produce guidance by the end of the year. Um, I think we're doing quite well with, um, you know, because the other report, of course, was the Six Lives report. And we're doing quite well. We, this year is going to be our third conference um, on improving acute care for, for people with learning disabilities. And it's going to be held um, 15th of October in the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford. And as you know, Sir Jonathan Michael is actually the chair of that trust. So he's going to be at that conference. And then the other big piece of work is um, we're about ready to roll with um, a survey monkey asking all the directors of nursing, at the moment only in the NHS, but I'm hoping that it's going to uh, roll over into the independent sector, about um, a number of questions really about um, number of learning disability nurses that they employ, what their services are, all that sort of stuff. But important for us is what they've actually done to um, implement the recommendations in strengthening the commitment. So that piece of work uh, uh, is going to start at the end of this month, so I'm really pleased about that. Okay, and that's a lot for me. Was I in time? Hopefully. All right, thank you. Um, I'm Margaret Serrells and I have to say I've well, recently appointed to the post of Pref to professional nurse advisor for learning disabilities in Scotland and I'm absolutely delighted to have been offered the post and I do see it as a great opportunity to contribute and to be part of shaping learning disability nursing sorry my throat's away <coughs> nursing now and for the future and I'm delighted to be able to share with you on behalf of Scotland all the good work that has taken place since the launch of Strengthening the Commitment. As you know, there are 17 recommendations came from the report and the emerging themes were strengthening capacity, capability, quality and the profession. Um, and I know we were all asked to make a personal pledge to strengthening the commitment and registering for today's conference. Uh, so I think it is appropriate at this point, before I move on, to share with you some of the work Scotland has undertaken, that I share with you the commitment, the pledge made by the National Implementation Group for Scotland, and that people of Scotland who have a learning disability, their family members and their carers rightly expect to receive person-centred care, safe and effective everyday services, and when required, specialist healthcare services. 
In order for us to meet this pledge, we need to continue to strengthen capacity and quality across all healthcare services to ensure this pledge is fulfilled, as well as strengthening learning disability nursing practice. Oops, sorry. So where are we now in Scotland? And I've listed a couple of the things, and I'll just briefly talk about what we've done. <coughs> Our national implementation group was established in November last year and we are currently reviewing and updating our action plan following a number of scoping exercises around workforce data which has been gathered from our health boards, independent and voluntary sectors and our social care services. The data we are gathering from this scoping work is extremely important and will allow us to map out current and future service needs and influence the development of new specialist nursing roles at both local and national levels. This data will progress our work in addressing a number of recommendations from the report. The 26th of March saw the launch of the Scottish Action Delivery Plan along with the pre-registration learning disability nursing framework and the career and development framework for learning disability nurses. We have also got, we're working on the Health Equalities Framework, but I won't say too much about the Health Equalities Framework as Gwen is going to present in this work uh, later in the day. But it is to acknowledge that four of our health boards in Scotland are implementing the Outcome Framework in partnership with NHS Educational Scotland and strengthening the Commitment User and Service Group. We do have a co-production group and this has been invaluable in supporting the development of this review and has provided meaningful contributions to specific elements of the review and they led on the development of an easy read version of Strengthening the Commitment, launching this work in London in April of this year. We now plan to further develop the role of the co-production group and aim to provide a more localised approach in order to support the work needed to fully implement the recommendations from the review at a local level. Both NHS Education Scotland Framework for Pre-Registration Learning Disability Nurses and the Career and Development Framework were launched alongside our Action Delivery Plan in March this year. Unfortunately, Learning disability nurses has an ageing population, no more so than in Scotland. Um, and I have to admit uh, to contributing to this statistic, therefore succession planning is vital across all health boards. Over the last year, we have seen a significant increase in our student numbers, which have now increased to over 100 across Scotland. The national model for pre-registration nursing is progressing well and both participating universities have now appointed the clinical academic posts. Within the, these posts will support the development, implementation and evaluation of a sustainable national model for pre-registration nursing in Scotland. They will also work closely with further education colleges, practice education facilitators mentors and service users and carers to enhance the programme design and delivery to meet our workforce planning needs in both the short and the long term. A number of educational roles are being prepared by NHS Education Scotland that will enhance and further develop our current nursing workforce's skills, knowledge and competencies. A few examples include the development of skills in psychological awareness and learning disability and an educational resource, a resource sorry, being developed for our healthcare support workers which focuses on be positive behaviour supports. These resources will be invaluable in ensuring all our nursing workforce are fit and continue to be fit for practice. Our most recent uh, strategy, The Keys to Life, was launched on the 13th of June this year. This strategy was de developed following a consultation process on our earlier national strategy, The Same As You. An evaluation team was established in 2010 to review and report on both the progress made across services as well as the challenges that remain within Scotland 
for the care of people with learning disabilities. Keys to Life made over 50 recommendations across all aspects of a person's life areas and has particular emphasis on health to ensure that all health professionals, not just specialist nurses, are working to meet the health needs of people with a learning disability. So what now? Our work to date throughout Scotland has laid down strong foundations from which to work from. We now need to strengthen these foundations by increasing our involvement with our frontline nurses, building wider supports into local implementation and linking into wider policies such as our Keys to Life and our Quality Strategy. Thank you. Welsh Assembly. No, just Welsh Government. Welsh. There we are. Yeah. Okay. Am I loaded up? Oh, does it? Okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, God, it's hard to see everybody out from here, isn't it? It's like a bit of a blur. I'm delighted to be here this morning and uh, be a part of this paperclip challenge. As Ros said, a lot of work has gone into this. It's you know, it's um, it's quite humbling actually, I and mean, when you see the commitment and the the level of enthusiasm people have got to sort of participate in this, it's it's really encouraging. So I've been in my post for just over two years. Um, so I felt for Margaret just now coming up and doing this first presentation because I can remember doing the same in Leeds at a stakeholders event. Um, and this had already, uh, strength of the commitment was already underway and I'd sort of come in and had to catch up a little bit and I'm very grateful to Ros and Ben and my other colleagues for being so supportive. Um, when I came into post, our Chief Nursing Officer for Wales, Jean White, was very keen to tell me that this was a high priority for her and in actual fact um, she has to list 10 of her main priorities every year and strengthen the commitment remains one of those 10 priorities and when you consider when we're looking across all fields of care including cancer care and paediatric care that modernizing learning disability nursing and strengthen the commitment is up there attached such a high profile i think says a lot about the commitment from welsh government and i think that's evident in the work that uh, we're seeing across wales so ben i won't go over what ben talked about in terms of the uh, winterbourne and the um confidential inquiry but I will say that in Wales um, as, as well as sort of strengthen the commitment being um, pushed forward by the four UK CNOs we also had a push um, from Welsh Government and that was in response to an Ombudsman report um, for a death of a patient in a general hospital who had a learning disability and the Minister at the time met with the uh, person's family and committed to them that things would change and we would demonstrate that we would do things differently and make sure we did everything in our power that this didn't happen again. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that um, as I go on with the presentation. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how we set it up in Wales and what we've been doing. Right. So, um, as we know, Rosmore leads this for the CNOs uh, in the UK, um, and then we have our UK steering group, and I need to change my Scotland lead, I'm sorry, Margaret. Um, and then we break that down into each country, so we have our old Wales ministerial working group, and then we have our local implementation groups. And the All Wales uh, Ministerial Group is quite unique, really, because we've got lots of working groups um, looking at lots of different things in Wales. But the fact that the Minister has requested an annual update, um, which we're just about to um, submit to him, I think, again, demonstrates that there is this commitment. Um, it's quite challenging, as it is in Scotland and I'm sure other parts of the country, in our... Um, rurality really in Wales and how we organise our services um, and I've just sort of tried to break that up into our health boards so we have um, 
seven health boards, and so each of these um, sort of have their own implementation groups, except for Abitawi Bruma Ganug, who who actually commission services for Cumtaf and Cardiff and Vale. So it's quite complicated the way that it's organised. Um, and of course, I, I think what's so the positive about it is we're a small population in Wales of three million. So I know all the heads of LD nursing across Wales. I know most of the services across Wales. And so we can make sure that when we're looking at implementation groups, we're making them community focused rather than being too generalized about how we're delivering strengthening the commitment. Um, I'm not going to go into the terms of reference um, because and I don't, I don't think that we need to, I thought I'd taken it off, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to say quickly who our um, uh, implementation group members are for the um, All Wales Implementation Group. It's been uh, quite an interesting start really over the last year in that we've had to re-look at who's in our implementation group because when we're looking at um, making sure that this group has power and that um, we're being listened to, sometimes um, it's not that it's not always helpful to have all learning disability nurses because we're all singing from the same hymn sheet and we have to make sure that the people who can influence are also a part of our group. So making sure that we've got input from directors of nursing so it's at that level within organisations. Obviously, you know, most importantly, that service users are fully involved in the whole process of it because they are actually our strongest voice. And when I've struggled to get things done in Wales, um, it has been the service users with a direct actually lobbying of the minister that has really pushed things and I've had to go back to directors and nurses and say, the minister has said, and that's come directly from service users' families. So just quickly, within our group, we're very fortunate to have Professor Ruth Northway, who's going to be speaking today as our chair, um, and is a very inspirational and fantastic uh, leader for the group. Um, we've got then representation from, as I say, all the health boards. Um, more recently, we've brought in um, Public Health Wales. Um, this was sort of done I, I, in a bit of an ad hoc way really and I'll talk a bit about that when we talk about the care bundles that we're producing but we realised that we did need to have um, input from Public Health Wales because the agenda isn't just about secondary care services it's about sort of that sort of getting across the general population and making sure that we're understanding the needs of people that learn disability at, at that level. And the other challenge I think we had was um, how did we engage the independent sector because of course um, so many of our people who are having um, sort of inpatient care find themselves in the independent sector um, and working as a government, it's, it's how do we engage and make sure we've got all the independent sector represented rather than just one specific group. And again, in Wales, we're quite fortunate being small, we have the All Wales Independent Healthcare Association, so we managed to get a nomination from there, um, that's Keith Barry, who's recently joined the group, I think for the last meeting, and is going to uh, represent Wales on the UK group. So it, it is growing, and I think we're getting more sort of um, um, valuable contributions now from, from areas w which were lacking previously. A lot of the work over the first year really was trying to do a scoping, a bit like Margaret was saying has been happening in Scotland, trying to find out really um, where our learning disability nurses are, how many we've got, where we haven't got them and where do we need them, um, and really putting a push on, again going back to what Ros saying, is the decrease in numbers we've seen in learning disability nurses over the past 10, 20 years. And I'm very pleased to say that we have increased our numbers in Wales. Um, I think Ruth knows exactly what the numbers are, our students. So our intake has gone up to 35, and that's gone up from, yeah, about 21. So, so it's quite, you know, I know it sounds small numbers, but it's quite significant in a small country like Wales where we're sort of trying to increased numbers in all our uh, nursing uh, specialities. So when we looked at the pro forma, what we were looking at, we learned disability nurses who have an identified area of specialism. So we wanted to know, have we got nurses working in uh, hospital liaison schemes? Have we got epilepsy nurses? Is this consistent across Wales? Um, and have we got, we, we know there's a massive deficit for learning disability nurses working at advanced practitioner level. And um, we have one 
consultant nurse in Wales who's here today, Chris Griffiths, so I'll be mentioning him again in a moment. Um, but, you know, again, that's a concern at the grades that learned disability nurses are working at, you know, usually five and six. I'm just being told I have to move, so I'm going to fly through this bit really quickly. Um, the areas that we're very concerned about are preschool children and school-aged children. It seems that the um, training has really focused much more on adult uh, populations, and we, we're very keen that we should be age-inclusive, particularly when we're looking at the issues surrounding people with a learn learning disability um, during transition periods, because we know this is one of the most problematic stages for families, for people with a learning disability, um, and, and how we manage that transition. So I'll whip through this um, just to say um, another area that we're very concerned about is the increase of people with a learning disability in our prison services at the moment. Um, we've got very few forensic learning disability nurses and again, we, we, Welsh Government have been working with learning disability services generally and have got now a pathway for people with a learning disability who go into our prison service and again that's going to push forward the agenda to make sure we've got appropriate skills within our prison and forensic services. Um, I can give more details about these other areas, but I just want to really go on, just to, uh, con to go back to what Margaret was saying, we're very concerned about the age of our learning disability nurses um, across Wales, and particularly in education we're looking at as well in the universities where, again, uh, you know, our future LD nurse lecturers um, are at a... Um, <laughs> in a sensitive way, <clears throat> maybe <laughs> approaching retirement. And just an example, we just looked at Betsy Cadwalder University Hospital Board, and you can see from there the age range from 40 and 50 plus is, is quite significant with uh, far fewer between the ages of 18 and 29. So you really have to keep this obviously in mind. And I'm going to finish just on some very positive notes. So our All Wales Implementation Group, um, we've just Ruth has done an immense amount of work on our progress report. We're taking that next Friday to our exec director nurse meeting where we're both presenting that together. And it's a bit like what Ben was saying, it's making sure it's on our exec nurse's agenda. It's, it's no good putting it on our RLD nurse's agenda, it's already there. Um, we've had a, a very successful campaign with MENCAP, getting it right through our general hospitals. I think the most important thing that I want to just mention quickly is our Thousand Lives Care Bundles, and this is um, such an incredible amount of work that Chris Griffiths, our consultant nurse, has been doing and Abitawi Bromaganug um, Health Board, working with public health, working with the family of the um, gentleman that died that I told you about. This has been um, quite um, <laughs> challenging, Chris, hasn't it? That the work has all been done, but it's how do we take that forward? And as I said, it's the minister saying, I want this taken forward. We're very excited. We think we have a launch for it in January. We're just doing the finalisation of it. So that means this will be rolled out across Wales. Every person with a learning disability then that goes into acute general care will be identified and have a, um, a care pathway that we monitor through our nursing matrix and our dashboards at, a, at an all-Wales level. And I think that's a really significant um, thing that we've achieved in Wales. And finally, we've had two annual stakeholders events, which have been uh, really successful. We're going to hopefully tie our next one in in January. This is all tied around your dates, Roz, <laughs> just to let you know. Um, and we're going to sort of, where we, we were focusing on independent sector and getting involvement, we're going to try, I think, and focus this more on our user involvement and uh, family involvement. And so that's where we are in Wales. Thank you. My name is Frances Cannon and I'm a Senior Professional Officer, as Rose says, with uh, the Northern Ireland Practice Education Council. And I'm here representing our Chief Nursing Officer from the Department of Health in Northern Ireland. Um, basically, um, NIPEC was asked to um, take on the role of representing Northern Ireland in strengthening the commitment in the absence of a learning disability nursing officer at the department. 
Now, uh, I would have to say, since I've been in post, and I'm in post just over a year, and I've been involved with this project for just over a year, um, we now have a nursing officer on a part-time basis, a learning disabilities nursing officer. So when Jen put up her chart and um, Morris Devine was the lead and I was chair, Morris Devine is acting in that role at the moment uh, in a, on a part-time basis and he's going to be replaced hopefully on a full-time basis in the near future. Now, they normally say you should keep the best to last, but I feel this is not the best. However, um, I just want to share where, you, where we are in Northern Ireland around strengthening the commitment. For a variety of reasons, um, and I'm not going to go into those, um, we have had sort of um, a lack of maybe leadership and, and sort of direction around learning disabilities, um, nursing officers posts, and indeed our CNO post. But those things are about to settle down, and I think uh, strength of the commitment is going to be definitely taken forward much more uh, rigorously into the future, in the, in the near future. But just to say that NIPEC, in partnership with the department, um, last September actually run a task and finish group. And at that, um, that group was chaired by Francis Rice, an executive director of nursing from the Southern Trust. And at that task and finish group, we invited a, a full range of stakeholders from learning disabilities and indeed other people who could influence learning disability services, to, uh, including the voluntary organisations, to that task and finish group. And we developed an action plan um, in response to the recommendations from strengthening the commitment. I have to say there was a lot of energy at that uh, task and finish group. There was a lot of people recognising this is a fantastic piece of work and we can actually reform and modernise learning disabilities in nursing. Um, now, following on from that task and finish group, we, NIPEC, in conjunction with Morris and the department, uh, drafted a, an action plan and that action plan has been submitted to the Chief Nursing Officer. Previous to, we've just had a, a new nursing officer appointed, so it's sort of we've been in a bit of flux, but it has been submitted to the Chief Nursing Officer to be submitted to the Minister for Health. Uh, and he is actually going to um, send that out for a three-month consultation. I was hoping today, Rose, that I would be able to say that it actually, I, I just checked yesterday to see had it gone out for consultation. It hasn't, but I hope within the next well, certainly for the next event. If it's not, I won't be here. <laughs> um, but it is, it's ready to go out and, um, I, you know, hopefully it will be going very, very shortly. It is envisaged with the Northern Ireland Action Plan that we will develop, and, and it's one of the actions in the Action Plan is we will create a collaborative who will lead, um, you know, the, and take the Action Plan forward. But I just wanted to finish with a very positive, and on a positive note, because um, on the 6th of September, NIPEC actually hosted the last steering group, Strengthening the Commitment Meeting, which was chaired by uh, Ross. And um, that meeting, and there's the steering group, looking very well. And um, after that event, we had a Health Equalities Framework event, which uh, Gwen and her colleagues are going to talk about later, where the four uh, learning disabilities nurse consultants uh, presented the HEF. Now, we invited our CNO, our new CNO in Northern Ireland. We invited um, learning disabilities nurses, managers, education providers, commissioners, executive directors of nursing from across Northern Ireland to hear firsthand from the learning disabilities nurse consultants about the HEF. And that was really a fantastic event. And the amount of interest, the amount of calls, the amount of emails that I've had as a result of that event has been fantastic. And I think it has reinvigorated everybody. Rose gave an overview of strengthening the commitment to these people. And uh, it was a captive audience. Um, and our CNO was there. And there is a fantastic commitment in Northern Ireland. We just need to get the next push from the minister and get it through the consultation period. So thank you.